Happy Monday, all you minties. This is the Uncanny Omar, and join me today for my advanced look at the X-Men by Jonathan Hickman, Omnibus from Marvel Comics. So, let's get this party started. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks of Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this Omnibus. This Omnibus is due to hit the direct market and the book market on... March 29th or 30th, depending on where you get your books. So, here we are. Jonathan Hickman's Omnibus. This is a first-time design for this particular era of X-Men in Omnibus format. Uh, we've had oversized hardcovers. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do a little comparison here to the other oversized hardcovers of this era. So, you have House and Powers of X, and you have X of Swords, the two big events. Uh, this, of course, is what kicks off this era of X-Men, and this is the event that takes place during this run. Uh, so here's what they look like. This is the standard editions, all of these actually. And this is what the spines look like. So you have this omnibus at 704 pages, and you have the X of Swords, which is 720 pages. And people ask me all the time, what makes one thing an omnibus, and what makes another one an oversized hardcover? Yep. Since 2004, I've never really known and still don't really, but I just like my books in oversized format. That's all I know. Uh, but this is the way that they will look on your shelf. As a matter of fact, this is where I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it right after House of X and right before all the other series and, of course, before X of Swords and Hellfire Gala. It is interesting that they went with this red spine. But the Red Spine looks a little bit different than the Wolverine and the House and Powers of X hardcovers. It has a flatter tone to it than the other two. But this is where I'm going to be putting it on the shelf. So I mentioned standard edition cover. And on the left, that is your direct market cover. So let me know in the comments down below if you're picking this up, which one you're going to go for. Uh, mine was apparently lost in the mail. And man, David had to pull some strings to get this copy out. So seriously, thank you to Marvel. That, that was awesome. Uh, so yes, we have this cover. I believe this is to issue number 10. Uh, Lionel Francis Yu supplying this cover with the Summers family and members of the Star Jammers and the Imperial Guard down there. Again, the spine, which we shown off a few times already and then the back design it's the the exact same designs that we've seen in the trade paperbacks we've seen in the oversized hardcovers so i kind of figured this is the way it was going to look when it came to the omnibus the book retails for 75 dollars and here it is what it finally is collecting it is collecting x-men 1 through 12 and 16 through 21 giant size x-men jean gray and emma frost Nightcrawler number one, Magneto number one, those are all from the Giant Size X-Men by the way, Phantom X number one, and Storm number one. There have been so many different um, just solicitations out there with that particular content and it's just been so hard to follow but it is finally here and I can attest after reading this for the last couple of days that that is what it contains in here. Uh, there were rumors that this, I'm sorry, this is the design of the book under the dust jacket so you do have the x-men logo down there uh and then of course the spine under the dust jacket hickman you daughter man azrar and go now let's crack this open and talk about some of the stories in here check out this artwork and talk about the binding let's go ahead and get this open we have some black end paper there the design of the x-men logo again here are all your credits, the writers, the artist, the late Jerry Alangulan passed away, um, I believe early last year. Uh, he was an awesome inker for Lionel Francis Yu. They've been working together for a long time. Uh, but you do have the talents of Lionel Francis Yu, R.B. Silva, Matteo Bufangdi, uh, Russell Dodderman, Mahmoud Azrar, Alan Davis comes back for that Nightcrawler one-shot, Rod Reyes. Phil Noto, Brett Booth, just to name a few of the creators in this particular book. So this is the way that it's mapped out. Uh, you don't have the cover here, just like every other Jonathan Hickman book that he himself uh, has helped mapped out. And that's always been a question, right? Is it really Jonathan Hickman or is it the publishers that are mapping these books this way? Having talked to him many years ago, uh, especially with the designs of uh, East of West, 
I know that he had a hand in it. And that's the way he likes it. He wants you to experience this feeling of reading a book instead of just single issues. The covers are all, of course, collected in the back, which we'll look at in a little bit. Um, but everything else from the issue is intact, right? Besides the cover, which is also collected in these particular collections. We've seen it this way in the trade paperbacks and the other oversized art covers that have come out. Uh, but it's like whatever the color they're using, whether it's Excalibur Green or Marauders Blue or X-Men Red, that's the, tone, uh, the tint that they're using for the finish. So here we have some Lionel Francis U artwork. Uh, we have an aftermath, pretty much, of House and Powers of X, but it does set up the new status quo for the X-Men, where the X-Men are now located. So if you've not read this era, then maybe, I don't know, put me on mute, just in case. I hate to spoil it, because this is probably one of the most unique era of X-Men that I've read in the 35-plus years reading about these mutants. It's It's been an amazing ride, uh, with some bumps of course <laughs> all along the way like every other run in comics uh but everything that jonathan hickman wrote for x-men is in here and that's what i was getting to at the beginning when i finally said this is exactly what's collected in here because i've seen uh solicitations include new mutants i've seen solicitations that have included the x of swords issues i've seen solicitations that have included the empire one shot but no this is pretty much it it's just the X-Men run by Jonathan Hickman that is collected in the 704 pages. So this era of X-Men, let's go back to that part where I said maybe some spoilers here. I do have to talk about it. Everybody ready? All right. Let's talk about some spoilers and just very, very minimal spoilers. And they are very minimal spoilers, just to put that out there. But spoilers nonetheless. So we are talking about the era where the X-Men are now united. All mutant kind is in love. Everybody is singing Kumbaya on the island of Krakoa. They have established themselves as a nation. They have demanded, in a way, that the entire world acknowledges that they are a nation. They're supplying the world with pharmaceutical needs. And they are accepted as a nation. They are left alone. This is a lot different than what was going on with Genosha, when, especially when Magneto was over Genosha. This is an acknowledgement by the entire world that, hey, this is a country. You know, It's a place where these people, these mutants can be. And it's a place where only mutants can enter because of the gateway. So these gateways that, not gateway, the guy from Australia, but gateways that the mutants can go through. They're the only ones that can enter. Humans are not allowed to enter anybody that's not a mutant, pretty much. So they are safe. And that's what this is about. Now, of course, there's always some nemesis. There's always some opposing force, right? Uh, so we have, of course, the folks at the Orcus Forge that are planning a counterattack because of the events of House and Powers of X. So House and Powers of X, do I recommend reading it before this? Absolutely, 100%. That is what you need to read before this. You don't need to read Excalibur. You don't need to read Marauders. You don't need to read Wolverine. X as long as you read House and Powers of X to set this up, you will be fine. Do you need to have read 30, 40, 60, 50 years... We're almost at 60. Uh, 60 years of X-Men before reading this. No, not at all. This is new reader friendly. It is a new status quo. I don't mean it's revamping the entire universe. Like, you know, I'm not talking about an event after Crisis. This is where we're going to start over again. No, but it is setting these characters up in a new light. So this is what the artwork looks like towards the beginning. Uh, but that's really what I wanted to say about the spoilers, you know. And when I mean mutant kind, I meant all of mutant kind, including Magneto. Uh, Apocalypse is there. As a matter of fact, Apocalypse is like wearing a suit in issue number, was it four and three, when they go to like a business meeting. Uh, no, it's issue number four. Uh, we have Vulcan living with the Summers. We have Wolverine living with the Summers family. It's just interesting that every grudge has been put aside as long as you're a mutant. Now, of course, there's some bad mutants that don't want to listen to anybody and you saw what happened to a specific character not going to go into that spoiler in the pages of house and powers of x when it was voted by the council that yeah this is going to be problematic let's get rid of them so that's pretty much it and every issue it's it feels like every issue is an introduction to more and more of this world that jonathan hickman is building so you know in this one, it's kind of like a recap of what's going on with the family. We're introduced to some new bad guys. Uh, we're introduced to this character known as the Summer 
uh, summoner, sorry, not the summers, uh, the summoner in issue number two that comes from another island, almost like a sister island to Kakoa. Uh, and there, well, you can find out for yourself how much of a relation there is between Arako and uh, Krakoa, because all of this leads into the events of X of Swords, or Ten of Swords, if you've read it. Uh, now, none of those issues are collected in here. We're going to get to those here in a little bit. The Horticulture. These old four old ladies that come and kick the X-Men's ass. Oh, the great characters. This is what I meant by business meetings. Because we do have a little bit of that in here. So it's just a little bit of everything. We get to, you know, catch up with a lot of these mutants that we haven't seen for a while. And without going into more spoilers about House and Powers of X... This new status quo for the X-Men also give them the ability to uh, not be taken out of commission permanently. Something has happened through the House and Powers of X that has given them the ability to kind of be like, not worry about impending doom or death. Um, this is a powerful issue right there with Mystique and, of course, Destiny. This is the Arrow issue right there where she has to fight Apocalypse. And then we have... The way this is mapped is the way that these issues were coming out, by the way. So, for example, this is where they put, after issue number 7, the giant size Storm issue, which is beautifully drawn... Or, no, this is Jean Grey, I'm sorry. Jean Grey and um, White Queen, Emma Frost. Which is a take on the classic Grant Morrison, Nuff Said issue. But pretty much something is going on with Storm, and where she is poisoned and they have to find a cure because she only has a certain amount of hours to live we do have the return of some characters if you are familiar with the x-men of course you uh, have the return of brood we have the imperial guard the star jammers like i mentioned on the covers and then we have some characters from a underrated run and that is of course by carrie's run and that's the children of the vault they have come back this is alan davis's wonderful wonderful art on nightcrawler it's good to see him come back. So I want to get to how they handle the X of Swords crossover. This is the Phantom X one shot, which is... I know Grant Morrison, they created Phantom X. But this is my favorite story featuring this character. Because it is so good and I did not see the things um, going the way that they went through this issue. This is the Storm one shot. Again... The giant size X-Men stories, the planet size X-Men stories, those all are one continuing story that are happening in the background and during the events of the monthly issues. So here is X-Men number 12, another issue that I've seen some solicits leave out. I saw some solicits say that this contains issues 1 through 11, but it does contain issue number 12 because I think it's important to keep here. Uh, it talks a little bit about the history of Araco, who are the mutants that are living in Araco, and why they want to come over to our realm and start a big fight. And of course, all of that leads into the big crossover, and that is the X of Swords. So all of this leads into the X of Swords, but issues 13 through 15 are not in here. They're all collected in this oversized hardcover, which is still in print or in the trade paperback version of this uh, story. So if you want to read that story, much like Extinction Agenda being left out of the Chris Claremont Jim Lee omnibus, that event is left out of here. Uh, but you do get the aftermath of that event, where it does change a lot of the things going on. We have newer characters show up from the island of Araco. And I believe this is, yeah, Phil Noto. And then you have some Brett Booth artwork in here. Mahmoud Azrar. I really enjoyed the story. I know I've talked about it a lot whenever I do the weekly upcoming Marvel trades, but this is the return of the Children of the Vault, just how deadly they can be and what's going on with them a little bit, like what's making them think the way that they do. Uh, but I think in this, man, Laura and Sink really kick ass. I love the way they handle the things going on with them and their bodies. Then we get closer to, of course, wrapping up Jonathan Hickman's run. And anytime you have the maker in a book, boy, that makes me happy. And that is, of course, Forge. The other thing that I knew was going to be left out of here, that people thought was still going to be collected in here, and that is, of course, Inferno. Uh, but this ends with the gala issue that leads into the Hellfire Gala. Uh, but this does also not include Inferno. This is the four-issue Inferno series. Not to be confused with the classic Inferno series. 
That's why I'm here, to do reading orders. So you all don't get that confused. But this does end with this particular issue where they announce a new team of X-Men. And then Jonathan Hickman, of course, leaves the book, goes over to the Inferno four-issue miniseries, and is currently on hiatus himself from X-Men. But he's still a creative consultant, so I'm not sure when he'll be back. Now, let's look at the way the covers are handled back here. So the covers, the original standard edition covers, are all in a splash page, which is good. I was worried there were going to be a bunch of thumbnails back here. But at 704 pages and just making it his X-Men run, I figured this is the way it was going to be handled. That was wrong. It was issue number 9, not issue number 10. And here's the giant size covers. This is issue number 10, the Vulcan Petra uh, issue there. There's the Summoner with issue 12. And then again, skipping issues 13 through 15. And we get... Most of these covers supplied by Lionel Francis Yu. Now, of course, he ends up leaving the book, too. Uh, here's... I oh, love that variant cover of X-Men number one. Most of the variants, I will say most of them, are collected in a splash page, which makes me happy because I was worried those were going to be in thumbnail format. Now, some of them are in thumbnail format just because they here is a... Whoa! What is up, Jean as the Black Queen of the Hellfire Club? What's up with you, too, there, Emma? Anyway, um, where the hell was I? Oh, yes, I was worried because in the trade paperbacks, they, they are all collected in thumbnail, just about. The variants are all collected in thumbnail, but there's just a few in this particular collection. And some more variants that we've seen. I've always been a big fan of that one by Mike Del Mundo. Hellfire Gala variant. Uh, Iban Coelho back there. Oh, this Jen Bartel is absolutely stunning. And that's it. 704 pages. Let's talk about the binding and build of this one, though. So it is sewn binding. Here's what a spread page looks like towards the middle. Here's what the eye looks like. Um, I honestly didn't have any issues with the book just laying over. Um, you know, no, no real gutter loss. Just showcasing the way that it lays over towards the front because there's really not any spread pages towards the very beginning and the way that it lays over towards the back here like i said no real issues with the way the big the book lays over hardly any gutter loss uh the paper quality is this thin glossy paper from that we've seen in imac omnis before uh it's not as thick as the x of swords or the house and powers of x uh, so it definitely feels thinner. And I always say this, um, I'm not sure who has it, but it's not as thin as the Defenders Omnibus or the uh, Conan by Kurt Busiek Omnibus. But you are going to see some, especially depending on the kind of light you're using, you are going to see some art come through from the opposite page. That stuff bothers you. I don't know. You know, it doesn't bother some people, but that is something that I wanted to point out. And that, as they say, is that. If you are interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know near mint condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you're going to be picking it up, if you have the trades, if you've never read this era of X-Men, if you're reading this era of X-Men, what you think about it, and which other of the other oversized hardcovers are you going to pick up? Are you hoping one day they'll do a Dawn of X omnibus? Who knows when that will be, years from now maybe. But anyway, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and Patreon. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. And more importantly, everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.